Let me start this video with a small disclaimer. I don't want you to approach this video as one of those get rich in a week type of videos because it's not. Never forget that for you to be good on any type of skills, there's a lot of hours and practice that you have to put in. This video comes along with this PDF file and I'll have it linked in the description so that you guys can download and follow the step-by-step -step guide. I usually create polls so that you guys can vote which video should I publish next and 70% of you guys voted for this video and here you have it. Flutter, the most popular cross-platform framework in 2021. If you're watching this video, chances are you already know what Flutter is, but if you don't, Flutter is a cross-platform framework based on the Dart language and developed by Google. It's mainly used to build mobile apps, but now you can build web and desktop apps as well. There's a lot of hype around Flutter, which is natural because it's amazing, and there's a high demand for Flutter developers as well. On this video, I will be giving you guys a step-by-step -step guide on how to go from zero to a Flutter developer in four weeks. The only rule here is that I cannot recommend you guys any type of paid content. So all of my recommendations will be free resources. And the only requirement is that you have experience with object-oriented programming. It doesn't have to be Dart specifically. Any language should be good enough to get you started. Now that you have all of the data, let's go straight to the good stuff. Uh, uh, talking about data, this video is sponsored by DataCamp. DataCamp is an online learning platform that makes it easy to acquire data skills. Learn at your own pace with interactive courses and hands-on exercises. No previous data skill is required to get you started. DataCamp has courses for all different skill levels. I would recommend you to take this introduction to Python course to get you started and to check the platform out. With DataCamp, you'll learn directly from your browser because it doesn't require any extra software. And you can take free assessments, which gives you a personalized learning recommendation. If you want to stand out from the crowd, increase your chances of landing a job on this extremely hot field, and learn from experts actually working on the field, DataCamp is the way to go. Sign up using the link in the description, and if you do so, all first chapters of DataCamp's courses will be free of charge, and you'll be supporting the channel as well, so thank you very much. So this is how we are going to do this. You will divide 30 days into four weeks. For each week, you are going to build a Flutter project. The complexity of each project will increase as the weeks progress. Following this approach has many advantages. One, I really believe that the best way of learning is by doing. Instead of having a bunch of theoretical topics to learn, you will learn things as you need them, which will prevent you from feeling overwhelmed and giving up on Flutter altogether. 2. You will add this project to your Git profile, what will come very in handy when you apply for entry-level positions or when you want to showcase to your prospect clients. With that out of the way, let's get started. Week 1. Project 1. To-do app. First step, installing Flutter. Assuming that you already have an IDE or text editor like VS Code, IntelliJ or Android Studio installed, the first thing you will need to build a Flutter project is to have Flutter installed on your computer. To make that possible, you can follow two routes. One, you can read the official documentation at flutter.dev, which I highly recommend you to do, or you can watch this awesome YouTube video by London App Brewery. Just as a small reminder, you can find all of the links on the description of this video. Step 2. Flutter Basic Layout Now that you have Flutter installed, it's time to learn about Flutter Basic Layout or Flutter Basic Widgets. Here you will learn first what's a widget and then learn about some common Flutter widgets such as a container, a row, a column, a list view and so on. A great resource is again and first of all the official documentation about Flutter layouts and the YouTube videos I recommend are this. Using common widgets by Jedi Pixels and Flutter layout basics by Fun with Flutter. And another important thing is that here you will start getting your hands dirty. 
you will build your first Flutter mini project. You will follow a step-by-step -step guide here on the Flutter Code Labs. This is not the project of the week, it's not a to-do app, it's just a mini project to get you familiar with building a Flutter app. After reading the documentation and watching these videos, I believe that you'll be comfortable enough to work with the basic widgets or basic layouts in Flutter. The next step after this is understanding one of the most crucial topics which is state management. But for the first week, uh, you are not going to do nothing very fancy or complicated. You are going to start with the Flutter basic state management. Now it's time to understand more about stateless and stateful widgets and how to manage the state of your apps using the default state manager that ships with Flutter. On the official Flutter website, there's this article called adding interactivity to your Flutter apps. That's a very good read to be able to understand the differences and how stateless and stateful widgets work. And another option that you have is to watch this YouTube video by a YouTube channel called Code with Andrea. Super awesome. And at the very end of the week, you are going to build your second mini project that it's going to basically put together in place everything that you have learned so far. At this stage, you should have enough knowledge to build a simple to do app using Flutter. But to make your life easier, you can use this Medium article as a base, right? A reference point. So while you're building a to do app, if you face any type of issue or challenge, you can come and read this article and see how they have done it and try to replicate that in your code. Week two, project two, news app using REST APIs. The goal of this week is to learn how to fetch data from the internet and work with third-party APIs. You can start by reading the documentation as always. At the official Flutter page, they have this article called Fetch Data from the Internet. If you read along, you are going to build an app that fetches music albums from the internet and displays the results in your Flutter app. And you will also learn how to grant internet access to your Flutter apps. Another great read is this Medium article called Retrofit, the easiest way to call a REST API in Flutter. On this article, you are going to learn about another great package called Deal. Basically, when it comes to HTTP calls, the main packages in Flutter are HTTP and Deal. And it's very important for you to learn them both so that you can choose which one you're going to use for your project. But most of the time you will basically just go with Dio because it has more features apparently. Another very important topic to learn during this week is local storage. Even though you're not going to implement this in the week's project, this is a very crucial and important thing to know as a Flutter developer. So I will be linking relevant resources about local storage on the description section. By now you should be completely ready to build your own news app using Flutter. But again, to use as a base or guidance, you can watch this video by CodeX. He builds a very similar app so you can just follow his steps. Week 3, Project 3. To do app using Firebase. The thing I love about to-do apps is that if you are able to build a to-do app, you are basically able to build most of the apps you will ever have to build. On this week's project, you are going to reuse the first project you built on the first week, but instead of having the to-do tasks locally on your app and losing them every time you close the app, we are going to store all of that data in a database. Another important thing you want to be able to do is to authenticate your users so that when the user opens the app, he only sees the data that is related to him. And to make all of that possible, we are going to use Firebase because one, it's the easiest and arguably the best way to do that in Flutter. Now, the very first task of this week is to actually understand how Firebase works and what's Firebase. And one of the best resources to do that is watching this video, Firebase Ultimate Beginner's Guide by Fireship.io. And now that you have a basic understanding of what Firebase is and how it works, 
is very important to start structuring your projects because your projects are growing in size and complexity and having random files all over is not going to do you any good. A very good uh, resource is this video by Tadas Petra uh, called Flutter File Structure for Big Projects which is a super good video or you can check my GitHub. I have this project called Flutter Shopping App and uh, if you like the structure of that project you can analyze it and follow the same structure for your project. And now it's time for advanced state management using Flutter. There are a lot of solutions for state management in Flutter but the most popular ones are GetX and Providers. What I would advise you to do is learn how both work and then choose which one is better for you. For GetX I would recommend you to watch this video here and for providers I would recommend you to watch this video here. After you have watched both videos you should be able to pick which one is better for you but I would personally recommend you to go with GetX. Okay now it's time to learn about Firebase user authentication. A very good resource to learn about Firebase services is this website called Flutter fire and here you have different firebase services we are talking about authentication cloud firestore and everything so in summary everything related to flutter and firebase that you want to learn just come here to this website and they have awesome documentation the other option is to watch this video called flutter firebase authentication the clean way now after you are done with the authentication the other portion is crude operations, create, update, and delete. And uh, this is very simple to do with Flutter and Firebase. And I would highly suggest you to watch this video by Andy Julau called Firestore Crude with Flutter Part 1, right? And after you have watched all of this and learned all of this, believe me that you are ready to build your to-do app using Firebase and Flutter. But again, if you want to use something as the base or a guide, you can watch this video and I think it's a series actually by Tadas Petra starting a to-do app with Flutter and Get X. So now in theory, you have spent more or less three weeks focusing on Flutter very hard and you have learned a lot of stuff. Now is the time to build your last project to make you a Flutter developer in four weeks first of all i want to let you know that if you made it this far believe me that you are ready to take flutter entry level positions believe me now what makes a very good developer i think that is the ability to research and find solutions for yourself that's why for the last week i will not provide you any type of resources i will just leave you leave you with a challenge and the challenge for the week four is to build a chat app using Flutter and Firebase. I want you to try to build this app by yourself as much as possible. Avoid cloning tutorials or step-by-step -step guides the same way you have been doing for the past three weeks. This process will help you evaluate how much you have learned so far. And don't get me wrong, it's super okay to search for things when you need them, but just don't copy the project step-by-step. The features of the application are very simple. Users should be able to authenticate and to search and chat with other users of the app. I will be waiting to see what you guys do. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and comment. See you guys on the next one.